Hey folks, so Coros has just confirmed a substantial set of security vulnerabilities impacting not just their watches, but the phone app and all of your data in your online Coros account. And not just one security bug for these watches, but actually eight different security bugs, and all of these are pretty massive bugs. Now I'm gonna walk through what has happened, uh, who found the bugs, the timeline, and when these bugs are going to get fixed, uh, as well as a bunch of communications that I've had with Chorus over the weekend about these issues. Okay, so stepping back then all the way back to March 10th, a security researcher uh, by the name of Moritz Abril found these bugs. I presume he's an athlete. He had a Chorus Pace 3, this is the Pace Pro, but he had a Chorus Pace 3 and started digging into some of the protocol uh, bits between the watch and the phone app. So basically the communication that happens between the watch and the phone app. And at the time, he found eight different vulnerabilities. Now, those vulnerabilities basically got bucketized into different categories that ultimately had the following six repercussions, if you will. Uh, so number one, you could hijack uh, the victim's Chorus account and accessing all of their data. So everything on the Chorus online platform, you could access. Uh, number two, you could eavesdrop sensitive data, including notifications. Number three, you could manipulate the device configuration, so all of your settings on your device. Uh, number four, you could factor reset the device. Number five, you could crash the device. We're talking about the watch here. Uh, and number six, you could interrupt a running activity and force the recorded data to be lost. So if you are out running a marathon, someone standing on the side um, of the sidelines there could go ahead and basically crash your watch and delete your activity. But more than that, as he could outline in this post, he could also inject messages back to you as the user. And he gives the example that you see right here of a fake CEO uh, texting that you've been fired. And of course, this is one of many things that again, like generalized down into six core buckets. All of these buckets are really bad from like a security standpoint. So what happens after he discovers these? Uh, so he lists out as part of the disclosure timeline there on March 10th, uh, he discovered them and on March 14th, he reported them to manufacturer. Typically speaking, security researchers will double check all their work and make sure everything is correct before going to the manufacturer. To Chorus's credit, the exact same day, they did confirm they received uh, that list of bugs from him, uh, but he didn't receive another update for another month until basically April 15th, uh, when he finally received an update from manufacturer saying that they would be fixed by the end of the year, by the end of 2025. Uh, that is, that's a long time for a lot of things in the security researching world. That's a long time to give more details about when the update were released. And it's a long time to actually have the thing fixed, especially for security updates, and especially for something this major. You can't really get any more major than this when it comes to security issues. Uh, those list of issues there, are about as big as you can get. The fact that you can take over the watch, you can get all the data on the watch, and you can take over and get all the data on your account, that's as big as you get here in this particular scenario. So at this point, the security researcher basically said, okay, and just hung out. And again, just to reiterate at this point that all of these issues allow someone just standing somewhere nearby. So again, they could be on the side of a course. They could be in a building with you, on an airplane with you, uh, just hanging out, following you in a cafe, whatever the case is, uh, they are somewhere nearby you and doing this entirely wirelessly as opposed to having access to your device, your phone, or anything like that, which is, again, a pretty big deal. Now, it's customary for security security researchers uh, basically you give about 90 days for the manufacturer to do their thing before you publicly disclose those. Uh, this is kind of long agreed upon um, when people find security issues in products, you give the manufacturer 90 days, at which point you publicly disclose them. Now, if the manufacturer is working closely with you to get those things fixed and they need an extra few days or something like that, not usually a problem. Most security researchers want these things to be fixed before bad actors, bad people do bad things with these issues. So waiting an extra day or two after 90 days isn't an issue. But in this case, they were telling him by the end of the year. We're talking almost nine months uh, since the disclosure of these fixes, which is an exceptionally long time for something as massive as these issues are. So on June 17th, uh, which is 13 days ago, he went public with this on his blog and site and tweeted out and whatnot. For better or worse, nobody actually noticed it, uh, at least until last Friday, and when someone sent me an email about it, uh, which kicked off a chain of events where I said, wow, this is a pretty big deal, and because the researcher had outlined every single one of these vulnerabilities, and more importantly, all of the code to reproduce these vulnerabilities, it was very clear that these were very, very real. So I went back to Chorus and I emailed a whole bunch of people. I went with the like, I'm going to make sure someone notices this email approach. I emailed the CEO, I emailed the head of product support and communication, I emailed the uh, internal head of public relations, and I emailed two external uh, PR people that were part of their external PR firm for both Americas and Europe. Uh, and 
Yep, that, that did the job. Within a few hours, I got a response back saying they received my email. This was on a Friday night, so keeping that in mind. Uh, also on a Friday night at the end of Eurobike, where a bunch of those people were traveling all around the world. But nonetheless, I received an email back saying, hey, we've got this. We're going to get an answer as soon as possible. In my Sunday, I had an email from Coros' CEO in my inbox uh, detailing what went wrong here uh, in terms of their response and how they're going to fix things going forward. So my email actually had two core questions in it. Number one, did this actually impact all Coros watches. And the reason I say that is because the original uh, security researcher's vulnerability list there had only tested against the Coros Pace 3, meaning that's just the watch he happened to have. And so that's what he tested against. And he didn't claim uh, whether or not it impacted any other watches. But me knowing how these watches work, by and large, they're going to use the exact same protocol to talk between the watch and the app on all their devices. That's just how companies do software development, especially smaller companies. Uh, so the first question is, does it actually impact all Coros devices? And Coros' CEO confirmed that yes, these indeed do impact every single one of the devices across the board, including their way back devices they would have to go back and fix. Uh, number two then was why on earth is this taking so long to push out these updates? Pushing to December for massive vulnerabilities like this seemed really out of line with reality. Uh, and he came back and said uh, the following, you're right that we were initially notified earlier this year, around 82 days ago. Uh, side note, by the way, it's actually 107 days at this point. I'm going to assume just late night mental math there, but that in that side. Uh, when we were notified, we started working on the issues, but I have to admit the priority should have been higher. It's a learning for Chorus to prioritize security related problems. We had responded to the individual who reported these concerns with an oversimplified answer of before the end of 2025, but we should have been more specific on the timeline with each item rather than speaking in broad terms and stated that these will be fixed long before the end of this year. He then went on to give me basically the uh, eight issues divided into two buckets. Uh, these numbers mean nothing, the 3.x and 4.x, that's just internal numbers for Coros, as he would clarify later on in a second email. Uh, but essentially, the first bucket is the things by the end of July, and the second bucket is the things by the end of August. These are roughly tied to two different categories of stuff. The first bucket being how Coros devices pair to the watches, and the second bucket being the communication channel between the device and your phone as to how they communicate. One of the challenges Chorus will have here is that this is a massive change uh, for this communication between your phone and your watch. And that is ultimately like the core of how these two devices talk. And they had to change pretty much everything there uh, to get around these security issues. In any case, he goes on to say, in summary, we will establish a better authentication process before and during parent Coros devices uh, before the end of July. The remaining issues are related to Coros Bluetooth communication during the product use, which requires a better encrypted communication. We will need to go through all historical Coros devices and update them one by one. The end of August is an aggressive goal, but we will try our best. Uh, he finished off with, he then finished off with, we want to thank you again for escalating the issues. And it's important for Chorus as a growing company to take learning from it, not only how to solve the reported problems, but how to streamline our internal procedures. So back in my pre like watch career, I was in IT and worked a lot with IT security stuff. So one of the things that most companies tend to have is a before and after moment uh, in their company history when it comes to IT security. So there's always a before where everything's happy go lucky and they don't really understand IT security. Then something bad happens and then there's an after moment. Uh, and in the case of the software development companies, that also really encompasses how they react to security issues. And as you can see, what's basically happened here is that this probably came in via normal support uh, mechanism, and it was just lopped in with all the other random user bugs, like little quirky bugs in your watch that Coro says, yeah, we'll fix this now and then, and whatever the case may be. But it was never prioritized as a security issue, nor a security issue of the severity that we're talking about here, nor eight of them of the severity that we're talking about here. Most companies, when it comes to security issues, they have a dedicated email address or dedicated contact form of some sort that security researchers can contact. And then once those issues come in, they have dedicated security teams that will triage those issues, raise them up internally within the organization, including to executive levels to make sure everyone's on board with it. And then they have very hyper-specific procedures for talking with that security researcher, ensuring timelines and updates are sent so that no one feels like they're in the dark, which clearly happened here. 
And thus, it seems like in this case, Chorus was in the before time frame, right? The before something bad happened, now something bad has happened, and now their CEO is saying, look, at this point forward, we need to redo our internal processes so that we can prioritize security issues coming in, because all companies will have security issues. Any company that thinks they won't is, is not a company that you want to be doing business with. Uh, you want a company to understand that they will have security issues, no matter how big and how vast and how secure they are, eventually they happen, and you want those companies to prioritize those issues as fast as possible and to ensure that everyone is kept in the loop to get them addressed as fast as possible. It's as simple as that. So in the case of Chorus, they're looking at the end of July for the first set, the end of August for the other set. Uh, and ultimately, you just got to update your device when those updates come out, uh, as soon as they come out. There's almost nothing more that you as a user can do today, short of shutting off Bluetooth on your watch uh, during an activity or whatever the case is, if you're out in public, I guess. Uh, but I would suspect that most people would say that's probably a bit overkill, uh, given how they might value their Chorus data. But again, to each their own. Anyways, hope you found this video interesting and useful. Plenty more sports tech, including plenty of Eurobike catch-up from last week, coming up in the next couple days. With that, have a good one.